Welcome to the Public Schools First NC Week in Review, a brief look at what happened in the General Assembly last week. Bill highlights. Two bills we discussed in our most recent Week in Reviews are House Bill 755 and House Bill 149. Neither of these bills have advanced and seem to be stuck in the North Carolina House. We continue to monitor both of these bills closely. Two other bills we're highlighting this week are Senate Bill 671 and House Bill 1173. Let's examine each of these more closely. Senate Bill 671, Virtual Education, Remote Academies, Virtual Charters. This bill transitions North Carolina's two virtual charter schools from pilot status to active status without going through a process of reviewing the results of their pilot years. The bill passed through the House with little discussion. Under this bill, the two virtual charters will be allowed to increase enrollment by 20% each year based on their 2021-22 enrollment for the next five years, when their charter may be renewed for 10 more years. This move is extremely problematic because North Carolina's virtual charter schools are consistently low performing. Because similar virtual charter schools had, been, had seen poor outcomes in other states, North Carolina did not want to grant full charter status until the schools had proven themselves. They have not. In the years for which there is performance data, neither school has received above a D performance grade or higher than 55 in growth. The North Carolina Cyber Academy earned the lowest possible growth score of 50 all four years as shown on this chart. When Senate Bill 671 went to the Senate for a vote last week, members found too many differences between their original version, which related to North Carolina's school voucher program, and this most recent House version of the bill. In a zero to 42 vote, senators sent the bill to a conference committee to iron out the differences. This delay provides an opportunity for North Carolina citizens to reach out to committee members to voice their opinion on the various elements of the bill and what to keep or remove. We'll say more about this in a moment. School districts across North Carolina were highly criticized by state lawmakers during the pandemic. There were repeated legislative efforts to encourage districts to return to in-class instruction. Therefore, it is puzzling that these same lawmakers are now promoting a bill that paves the way for even more virtual education provided by two virtual charters with nothing but abysmal outcomes for students. A new education bill was filed this week, House Bill 1173. Elect State Board of Education members, superintendent as chair of State Board of Education. This bill is a, propose, is a proposal to amend the North Carolina State Constitution by putting it on the general election ballot in November. If approved by voters, the bill would change the State Board of Education members from positions appointed by the governor to elected positions. The State Board of Education member districts would be the same as the U.S. House congressional districts. The North Carolina Superintendent of Public Instruction would become the chair of the State Board of Education. Currently, the superintendent is the secretary of the State Board of Education and a voting member. Why this change? Some speculate it is a power grab by the General Assembly because they have been unhappy with recent state board decisions. Changing our state constitution for political gain is a serious matter, and we encourage you to learn more about this proposal. What can you do? Contact the members of the conference committee that are reviewing Senate Bill 671 the bill that would expand North Carolina's two, two poor performing virtual charter schools. House members for this committee 
have not been identified yet, but you can contact Senators Lee, Ballard, and Davis with your concerns. Their contact information is listed here. Join us for a Citizens Day of Action in support of Leandro. On June 29th, education advocates will join Every Child NC at the General Assembly to advocate for the full funding of the Leandro Comprehensive Plan. The day will start with a press conference, followed by visits to lawmaker offices, and end with a partner luncheon at Chavis Park. If you've never participated in a Citizens Lobby Day at the General Assembly, please come and see how easy and empowering it can be. You'll be grouped with leaders that have done this before. Passage of Leandro funding will only happen if we show up and make our voices heard. Learn more about the Leandro Advocacy Day in our latest newsletter. You can receive the latest news and alerts about public education issues in North Carolina by following us on social media, sharing our content, and visiting our website. We offer a wide variety of resources, including research, fact sheets, and more. There, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter with all the highlights from the General Assembly and other timely news related to public education. Thank you, and please share this video.